have and they can actually see the bedrooms and the furnishings and everything to the point that they can almost touch it. And so one of the things you must also understand is this, it's impossible for you to see something that don't exist. It is impossible for you to see something that don't exist. So if you see it in your mind, you just have to make a conscious decision to move towards that. Many of us have an un, has a built-in fear of moving towards those goals because of the requirements that it, it, it takes. Sometimes, a lot of us, we suffer from something called anxiety. And it's going to be proven, it's been proven, it has been proven in research and in success that more people fail for fear of success than fear of failure. More people fail for fear of success than fear of failure. And now let me explain that a little. In fear of success, when you're about to do something, and, you can, and I've, I've engaged individuals with stores and other businesses, and I told them, this is how we're going to grow your business, and, and we're gonna, uh, you're going to have a couple hundred customers, and you're going to be on the World Wide Web. And they say, ah, and it becomes overwhelming for them, and they say, no, 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 I, just, just, I like my business just the way it is. Because they can't comprehend how they would handle the size and magnitude of that business. And too many times, when you begin to see the vision within your life, you begin to make excuses and create roadblocks for yourself to achieve those goals. And these are the things that you'll have to begin to focus on. And I would ask you to take an opportunity and define visions and goals. And here's what it says. Visions is not the same as establishing goals. Goals can be seen as immediate steps or benchmark which are established to measure progress towards your vision. Examples of this will be the XYB, XYZ library will be in three years the library collection will exceed 3 million volumes. And in five years, the library will exceed 4 million volumes. You notice, the library has grown. Those are goals. The vision is, if, is for the library to be what? The most premier library in the sciences in the world. And so what happens is that the vision doesn't have a limit on growth. When you reach the goals that you've set, then you can keep adding to and expanding upon it. And so what we want you to do at the beginning in here is to, be, is to create a vision for your life, as opposed to say, I'm gonna have a goal of obtaining a degree and getting a job and working for 35 to 40 years and getting uh, national insurance and figuring I'd spend, I'd spend 20 years for the rest of, after that for the rest of my life trying to figure out how I will survive on what they give me. You must invoke a vision bigger than any goals that you could ever have seen up to this point. Let me go back to something called fear. I want you to understand what, what fear is. Fear, there's three types of fear in the world, and it's very easy to understand and comprehend. The first fear. The first fear is called, is called fear of your mother, your father, <laughs> God, a gun, a car, a stove, a knife. Th that fear is called reverence or respect. You have no problem in going to God, no problem in going to your parents, no problem in utilizing a gun, a knife, or a stove, but you understand the power of it and the effect that it can have on your life. That's called reverence or respect. The second fear is called fight or flight. If I was to come to attack you, you would make a, you would make a conscious decision that you will actually fight to preserve your life or you will run. The third one, I want you to spell it with me. Spell fear for me one letter at a time. False, evidence, Appearing real. If it doesn't fit in one of those two categories, it is false evidence appearing real. So all you have to do is when you're faced with that particular fear within your life, that anxiety that wells up within you, you must make a conscious determination to say, which one of these two categories does this fit in? If it doesn't fit into one of those two categories, it doesn't exist. Most of you are dating or about to date or something of that, when you see that good looking guy across the room, you want that, or that, fear, that, that lady across there, and you have this anxiety, you want to say hi, and you don't, and eventually you go over and you say hi, what happens to that feeling you have? It disappears. You know why? It never existed. It was all manifested in you. And so what you have to do is make a declared declaration that anything that you face in life to determine your success, that you will actually take the opportunity to define it. Does it fit into one I should have reverence or respect for? Or does it fit into one 
that I should actually fight or flight. And if it isn't, I will dismiss it and move forward to whatever it is that I think of. Now back to a vision. A vision is indeed meant to inspire, along with the ability to articulate a vision, a true leader needs to be able to make a vision a shared vision. Nothing you have, no vision you have, can be accomplished without the help, nurturing, or involvement of others. There's no such thing as an exclusive vision. It doesn't exist. Somewhere, somehow, it will re rely on the cooperative involvement of others in the community, others in other businesses, others in other sourcing. It will involve someone else. A leader, and, le and the reason I'm going to focus on this vision and leader is because any successful individual, is an is, it's inevitable that they will be or will become a leader. And so in defining it, you don't say, it's my time. Um, I've, I've been young long enough to be able to take my position now as a leader. What you have to do is define. And you don't have to tell anyone what you are or that you're a leader. All you have to do is define your vision. A leader motivates, drives, and inspires other members of the organization and often those outside of it to believe in the vision. That motivation and creation of belief must translate in an effort to pursuit of that vision. Leadership is a highly relevant topic for the, for the business person. Some writers have suggested that, it, that we may be headed towards a leadership crisis within the country regarding the shortage of new individuals entering the political and business arena. And the substantial number of current politicians and leaders are expected to retire within the next decade. You will not automatically succeed them just by saying you are. You must have a vision that others can buy into for the development of your country and first of all, for the development of yourself. It's impossible to sell a dream of a country when you have not defined one for yourself. At the same time, the rapid rate of change, change regarding globalization and technological advancement shows no signs of slowing. Thus, it is necessary for you to prepare newer, newer it's, it's just necessary to prepare newer business people to take on the leadership roles in the Bahamas, if the Bahamas is going to remain strong and vital. There are many definitions of leadership and much has been written on the difference between leadership and management. Now, I'm going to define, I'm going to use something that Don Lee Riggs says and we're going to move on to something else. While management skills are important to keep organizations running smoothly and effectively, the focus is on leadership. Now, we often see people in certain environments and we see them in certain businesses and I want you to listen to very carefully to what uh, Donnelly Higgs writes. It says, the manager, and we see people running these businesses, and we see people running these companies, and we say, oh, they make a good leader. But I want you to understand, because oftentimes, and even in our political arena, you will see excellent managers, where they were excellent at running a business, and they have taken the role of leadership, and they are a dismal failure. Because one, management and leadership are not one and the same. Man, the manager administers, the leader motivates. The manager is a copy, the leader is an original. The manager focuses on systems and structure, the leader focuses on people. The manager relies on control, the leader inspires trust. The manager has, short, has a short range view, the leader has a long range perspective. The manager asks how and when, the leader asks what and why. The manager imitates, the leader originates. The manager accepts the status quo, the leader challenges it. The manager does things right, the leader does the right thing. I'm gonna move quickly on to what we, what, what, this is something I want most of you to pay very uh, close attention to, for those of you especially going into the business world. And this is the new global sphere, and it's called a knowledge-based economy. Have any of you ever heard of a knowledge-based economy? Any of you? It isn't coming. It's here. It isn't coming. It's here. And I can tell you it's here. The last time I've been in what you guys call a conventional job was 1979, when I was cutting lawns during the summer. From 1979 to today, I've sold my mind. In fact, as I stand before you today, 
in the back of my mind, I'm doing some calculations and computations that will actually have a check 